All right, we're back at FitWorks today answering some questions that you guys have been kind enough to submit on social media. Diane from Facebook inquires about rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, and fibromyalgia. And what food should she eat? What food should she avoid? First of all, when we look at disease and illness, anything that ends in itis refers to inflammation. So no matter what your itis is, one of the best things you can do is find ways to reduce inflammation. Um, and that means consuming foods that are anti-inflammatory. So what would they be? Uh, your omega-3 fats tend to be anti-inflammatory. Spices like turmeric tend to be anti-inflammatory. Things like ginger tend to be anti-inflammatory. So Diane, if it were me, I'd be looking at a way to incorporate more omega-3 fats on a daily basis. Uh, can I cook with turmeric? Can I sneak that into some of my meals? And Possibly exploring making things like ginger tea. Simple way to do that is get a ginger root, slice it into thin pieces, boil some water, steep the ginger for 20 minutes or so, throw some green tea bags in there for about eight minutes, take it out, now you're gonna have ginger tea. It tends to be anti-inflammatory. The other thing, and this comes from experience working with one of my trainers here at FitWorks that actually has an autoimmune disorder or disease, what he's actually found is certain saccharides, specifically polysaccharides, which is going to be sugar often found in what we typically refer to as a complex carb or a starch, will aggravate his itis. That means the inflammation will get worse. So I would also explore the impact of reducing consumption of your classic complex or starchy carbs and see what that has to do and, and what impact that may or may not have on your rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Elizabeth on Facebook asks, do you have some comfort foods or comfort food recipes that are eat by color? Yes, we have a ton of eat by color recipes. Comfort foods tend to be something that's more specific to an individual and it's usually on the nurture side of things. So what did mom, grandma, or mom and dad make when you were a kid, when you were sick, when you weren't feeling well? The best thing to do since I don't know what your comfort foods were when you were a kid is go to eatbycolor.com click the recipe and blog link up at the top and take a look at the recipes, pick the ones that would fall into comfort foods for you. Uh, Kim via text asks, what's going on with all these new males that are being made with olive oil? Are they legit? Are they good? Um, yes, I would look for one that has olive oil as the first ingredient on the ingredients label. Um, calorically, if you're watching calories, they have about 30% of the calories found in a tablespoon of regular mayo. My only concern with some of the mayos made from olive oil that I looked at is olive oil is in the product, but then right behind it are soybean oil and other vegetable oils that are higher in omega-6. And going back to Diane's question, omega-6 fats tend to be inflammatory. So we want to scale back or be aware of how much of those we consume. But otherwise, yes, Kim, I think it's a pretty good uh, source for mayo. Kim on Facebook asks, hi, I read... Uh, chapter 2 of Eat by Color, so that's this, folks, um, where you talk about what foods we should eat. I tend to use olive oil quite a bit already. Um, I've begun to explore the use of coconut oil, and I'm wondering how can I incorporate more of the right fats and the right oils into my daily, daily routine. Um, I'm a big fan of olive oil. I like flax oil. They're both anti-inflammatory. They're both high in omega-3 fats. Again, they're anti-inflammatory. Um, if you want to know what the benefits of omega-3 fats are, Google it. Uh, coconut oil is a great substitute to cook with. There's less risk. There there's, can be some concern with cooking things like olive oil at temperature, where if you get the temperature too hot, you can actually make the oil carcinogen, um, which means it's going to smoke. All these other things, if you're concerned for carcinogens, you want to avoid that. tends to not happen with coconut oil. won't happen with butter, uh, especially your range-fed butters. So those would be options. Again, when we look at how do I incorporate other oils or fats, I would probably say, you know, explore using olive oil, explore using flax oil, incorporate that with your vegetables, stir fries, etc. Um, Paul on Facebook asks, when preparing meals for my 81-year-old father every week, we're always concerned about getting him the right amount of proteins, carbs, and fats. What suggestions do you offer? Paul and everybody else, I would recommend pick up a copy of Eat by Color. Flip to Appendix A and take a look at the notes. It's the first page of Appendix A. Basically, most people, now if, I, if I'm 81 years old, I would look at life this way. I'm grateful for every day I have on the planet. I wouldn't stress too much about eating. If I wanted to 
maximize my eating and be a little bit more conscious of what I'm, I'm putting into my mouth every day in terms of food. I'd be looking to have protein every two to four hours. What's protein? If it was flying, walking, or swimming, it's a protein. It should be on your plate. I'd eat all the vegetables that I possibly can as often as I can. And then I'd be looking at the better unprocessed carbohydrates. So sweet potatoes, uh, rice, beans, oatmeal. And then in terms of what are some good meal ideas, again, I'm going to cite eatbycolor.com. Go ahead and click that recipe or blog post and take a look at the eat by color recipes that are there and, and choose from the ones you like and it'll give you a pretty solid list of different food ideas. So that's it for today. Thanks for asking your questions. If you've got questions, we've got answers. Feel free to ask on Twitter at eat by color, Instagram hashtag fitworks, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ravenkowski or facebook.com slash fitworks decal.